Hello? Why, yes, it is me, Bob the Drag Queen, the host of the Pit Stop at Home. What's that? My special guest is who? Oh my God, via $10,000 directly into your PayPal, it is Miss Alaska. Hey, girl. Mm. Alaska, you are the ever-changing queen. It used to be if you're not wearing nails, you're not doing drag. Now it is if you're not doing wearing nails, it's your body and your decision. It's so tea. Girl, this check out this manicure. <laughs> what is, Gorge. What is going on? I wore these for you. Okay, we both won drag race in 2016. Both of us mm. did and did that. Which, I mean, mm. which, by the way, everyone kept shading me all year being like, Bob won, and then five weeks later, Alaska got a bigger crown. It's shade, yeah, it's shade. So last week, Juju B lost the lip sync to Monet Exchange, and Monet revealed to the world that Mariah Paris Balenciaga, Ms. Mug for Days, got sent home. Au revoir, Mariah Paris. And now the girls are all sitting on the couch, and Shea kool has found out that two girls voted for her. She found out that Alexis and Mayhem both voted for her. Do you think this is with Shay's head? Like, has this changed how she's playing the game? Yes, of course. I'm, I'm sure that she went into it and just said, I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna do the best, and I'm gonna be amazing, and I'm gonna win. And then like all these twists and turns and now it's like Macbeth and there's people hiding behind the drapes and now she has to be suspicious of everyone. All Stars flips the game upside down on its head. And in that moment I saw Shay have an Alyssa Edwards moment. Oh, you really want to come that way? All right. I knew you were that girl. I knew you were. <laughs> For the main challenge this week, the girls have to perform in the improv comedy challenge, She MZ. All right, do you like improv challenges? Improv is really, really hard. I think it was clear that the girls really like prepared themselves and like had material to go on going into this. I liked it. Okay, the girls break up. They are now in their little groups talking. Shea kool and Alexis Mateo are fully giving you Dominique Devereaux and Alexis Colby. Everything is like subtle shade and a little bit mm. of, well, I don't know, and a little, ooh, well, and a little maybe you. It is so Alexis Colby and Dominique Devereaux, I can't even. Completely, the champagne is burned. It was obviously frozen in the bottle at some point. I mean, every <laughs> line. What right now, Alexis is not afraid of awkward confrontation. I think she thrives on it. She definitely does. And that's why I love her as a contestant on this show. She, she's great TV. She's also just really good at drag, but she's like great for TV because yes, she, exactly as you said, she will go for a confrontation. Okay, Cracker, now, before we start working, she wants to confront Blair St. Clair. Is this a mind game? What is going on? Now, before we get started, I just need to clear the air. Like, listen, before we get to this very productive work, bitch, you came for me once. I'm not sure what you said or did, but I feel like at some point you were coming for me. And I just, I need, it, I need to confront you about it. Okay, now let's talk about CMZ. So not only do the queens play their assigned characters, but they also play the douchey bros with the sideways heads. Who's the hottest bro? I have to say like everyone did a really good job except Blair St. Clair, <laughs> who's wearing more mug than I'm wearing right now. And she's wearing this like Ellen DeGeneres hair piece. Yeah, it was a like, bunch of bros and then Ellen showed up. <laughs> I really like Mayhem, Alexis. I, I just, I love Alexis Mateo. I did love uh, Mayhem being like, that's really misogynistic. That was one of my favorite parts of the whole thing. So good. So first up is Alexis Mateo and Shea kool as the ex-housewives of Tuckahoe. All right, what do you think of this scene? I really like this scene, and honestly, I thought this was the strongest scene out of them. Yes, like, Alexis was doing a little bit of steamrolling, which, like, in the world of improv is, is a no-no. But once they sort of got settled in, they both really were committed to their characters. Shea had... A, one beautiful hair unit that revealed to another just as elegant hair unit. There were prop gags, there were feathers. I, I liked their scene. They were vibing together, they had a plan, and they stuck to it. 
So now we're looking at the Blair St. Clair Juju B Miss Cracker Trio. It is a drag you admission scandal gone awry. Miss Cracker had more material than a fing Lady Bunny dress. I mean, <laughs> she had material, girl. That one line when Lady Gaga said uh, there could be a hundred people in the room, you were shocked. That's legit one of the funniest things I've heard on Drag Race. Legit. Quoting something that happened like a year ago. What do you think about Cracker's performance in this scene? Well, Ms. Cracker, um, she's very smart and uh, she's a good writer. And so she came in with a lot of like prepared zingers and jokes and bits, which if you're not the strongest improver, which I'm not, it's good to go in prepared with like, if you don't know what to say, do this zinger. It'll it'll yeah. get you to the next thing. I don't know, I think you're selling yourself short. I've seen you do some great improv. I've seen you do a really great job at Snatch Game. I think you're selling yourself short. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. I can do it, but it's not my preferred medium because I would rather have like a script by a great writer. Let's do this script. Thickening. Juju B was really like adapting and molding to whatever crack was throwing at her. Yes, it's hard to be the straight man. And she was definitely like straight man. Speaking of hard to be the straight man, I love that like Carson Corsi is so bad at butching it up. He literally just had to play gay. He's so funny. So finally, the last group is India Farah and Mayhem Miller as the shop liquors. One of them is, I think it's like a Winona Ryder spinoff kind of joke and she's caught shoplifting. And then the other one is a failed reality TV star who now owns a boutique. I liked um, India in this scene because she started out and she's getting hounded by a, a cameraman who's coming up and like asking a bunch of questions. So like she was very realistic in her like interaction with Ross. Yeah. Because it, it's sort of like you don't want to just go ham on this person right away. It's sort of like, oh, hi. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I was just doing some shopping. So like I thought India did a really realistic job. Mayhem, she does not want to be in a f***ing improv scene. It just... Yeah. It doesn't speak to her. I do think though the scene started strong, but it, it just really had a low dip, a very low dip. And then it picked up when the china started falling out of her vagina. I love the vase falling out from between her down there. The licking of the anything, I don't, I mean, the only thing I'll lick on Drag Race is Katya's face. Now, who's your favorite group? I liked Shay and Alexis. I thought it was the most entertaining. I would like to like watch that show. Here's the thing for me though. Shay and Alexis were the best group, but for me, honestly, I laughed the most at Miss Cracker. Okay. I didn't love the scene, but I remember thinking out of all of these people individually, for me, for me, for me personally, Miss Cracker did the best. <laughs> I love that. Who was your least favorite? My least favorite, prob I mean, probably was Mayhem. I mean, it just plateaued. And if there's not like a little bit of progression and like somewhere to still go with the character, you're just lost. Agreed, yeah, we're on the same page. Page 14, second paragraph, third sentence. Subsection three. The runway is camo couture. Now, didn't you have a camouflage like phase? Did I make that up? Um, no, it was leopard print, but camouflage is next. What do you think would have been your camo look? I would have done typical old camouflage color, the green and the, you know, brown. And and I think I would have done like a, a gown, like a wedding dress. If you ever just really want to do something fun, Google um, camouflage wedding dresses, because this is a real thing. What? Camouflage wedding gown. Uh, that's what I would do. All right, so we have Juju B who's wearing this like camouflage mini dress with a maxi cape. Thoughts? It's that old gag of like the cape and then you have like a print underneath and then you open the cape or the coat yeah. and the interior is the same love as, that. I love this. Juju's thick name. What I love is that it's two pieces that are pretty simple, but put them together and it really looks expensive. Now, Cracker's wearing this like uh, Destiny Child House of Darion Survivor get up. You remember back when Destiny Child would wear these outfits and then like, Beyonce would be in a full cat suit and Kelly would be in like a gorgeous yeah. gown and then Michelle would have the scraps. She had like a wristband <laughs> and like <laughs> and like a Chanel season one, like Trinity the Tuck and the, there was no fabric left. What do you think of Gregor's look? 
You know, it's not necessarily reinventing the wheel. You would think of Destiny's Child or like Little Mix or like girl group kind of vibe. And she takes that and she executes it very well. The tailoring is really great. She looks really, really great. Does it remind you of Morgan McMichaels in the in Gone with the Window Challenge? A little, little bit. bit. Right? I'm into it. I'm really into this look. She's showing skin. You're a drag queen that shows midriff. Bitch, when I tell you I would never. If you see my belly button in drag, it's because I'm passed out. Okay, now we're looking at Blair St. Clair. I don't know that this it really checks the box of camouflage for me because it's more like nature. It's a beautiful look, like it's, it's sickening. She could walk down a, a fashion runway. Does it scream like camouflage at me? No, it does not. Yeah, I don't know that I'm loving this. And that's on period. Like, it's fine. You can sort of get, a, get away with wearing some things when you're like a young girl. She's beautiful and she's young. I'm missing, I'm not saying she wasn't beautiful. She wasn't looking beautiful tonight. Tonight just wasn't her night, you know? Now, Shea Coulee is blending into her garden of flowers in this cute, okay. I love elements of this look and I like the whole look. Like neck up, this look is mwah. And the outfit is good. I knew I wasn't gonna be ready for Shea Coulee's runway this season, but I'm really not ready for, for all this. I mean, it's references, it's fashion, it's sexy, it's drag, it's fun, it's funny, it's like a little wink with a fucking camouflage watering can. Also, you have a limited amount of suitcases. I would not take up my space with a fucking watering can, but she did. And she's, it's like GG Good with, with eight helmets. You're packing your garments and you pack eight helmets? Are you crazy? Filling out the insurance on this suitcase. What are the contents? Helmets. <laughs> that's, no, that's all. All right, now we have Alexis Mateo. This is a standout for a, a myriad of reasons. Like this was really smart. She was like, I'm gonna take the fucking winter camo and I'm gonna become fucking share on the farewell tour. Right? It's drag excellence. Alexis Mateo is a drag queen with a capital D and a capital Q. This is my favorite look that she has done this season. It was a standout. She switched up her makeup, her hair looked amazing. This reminds me of why I was rooting for Alexis on her season. But let's talk about Mayhem Miller. I will say this is why this was camouflage. Because if she was wearing this in the club, I wouldn't notice her. This was like camouflage. <laughs> the house, this was, she took it a little too literal. What did you think of this? That's the thing. I, I agree with Carson's notes completely. I love the color choice, that sort of soft camo. Love it. She looks beautiful. Her hair looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. And like, Gorgeous. this is a, an amazing look for Mayhem. Looking really great is, is not enough to stand out on All Stars. I agree. Now here's my question though. Was that a little bit of shade? You said this is good for mayhem. Oh, hold on, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait one second. <laughs> Hello, yeah, I'm calling shade. I call shade. Was that? I call shade. I'm familiar with Mayhem's work and I see an evolution. This is stepped up from where she was on her original season. But not high enough for this competition. Michelle Visage reads people over and over for wearing like swimsuits or, or yeah. like a bodysuit. She won't stop reading people for it. It's textbook bodysuit. Yeah, there are two things you can say on Drag Race that will get the judges going against you. One, I can't sew. And two, showing up in a leotard. Like this should be the outfit, like if you're lip syncing, that you change your clothes into. So you can like and do it. Also, was it, I think, was it your season that started the changing of the clothes or that All Stars 3, where the girls would just show up in new clothes all of a sudden? I pretty much stayed in the clothes and for the most part, that's what the girls did, but it started on All Stars 2. Katia was wearing a fucking latex full length gown, which what are you possibly gonna do on stage during a lip sync while wearing that? So yeah. it made sense to like put on a crazy fucking bodysuit thing. Was that against you in the, the pants? 
There were so many victories. I can't keep them all straight. The best where you gave the legendary line and this queen let me borrow a shirt. She's done charity work. I, I, I followed her career since she started, since the day she started drag. She volunteers. She goes down to the children's hospital. She gives blood. But she let me borrow the shirt. Good night. <laughs> this is like such a different look for India Vera. The makeup is like very runaway. The hair is slick. You used to see India in this like monster wig. Now she's this like slick back look. I love her makeup. I mean, India Farah will paint you into the ground. And like you said, she's known for really going like drag, drag with it. This makeup showed real like precision and skill and like restraint. The outfit, I don't know. I need to get a, a closer look at it. We're having it delivered to your house right now. So. <laughs> oh, oh, thank that's, you. That's, that's there at the door right now. Like on a Project Runway, they go up and they look at it and they're like, oh, <laughs> I don't know, that's stitching. I see, I don't. The hair, I don't know that there's a human being who looks really good with wet, slicked back hair. Maybe like okay. Michelle Pfeiffer in oh. one movie. I don't, it's, I don't care for this type of hair. I, I well, don't. There are moments when I do when I do have liked it. Maybe I'm just jealous because like when I wear hair like that, I look like a fucking drowned dog. <laughs> like a sad golden retriever. I mean, to be fair, you are a little a little long in the face. So when you pull your hair back, it you know gives you the gaunt look. But you you have so many other great qualities. <laughs> All right, so who's your favorite? My favorite is Shea Coulee, and that's why today I'm giving her a two. <laughs> Our top two of the week is, I'm torn between Shea Coulee and Alexis Mateo. I love both of these looks, but if I had to look at them completely separate from this challenge, the one I would like the most would be Shea Coulee. It's editorial. There's like so many different pieces and details, like the leggings. The shape of the dress was very unusual, but it was like from that period. I don't know, it's, I, I can't, I can't say enough about her. I can't, I just can't. What is your least favorite um, look on the runway? We gotta be shady, we, we're gonna be shady tonight. I don't know, I guess I have to just say Blair St. Clair because, and it's not that it's not a beautiful garment and a beautiful look, it doesn't say camouflage to me. In terms of this challenge, my least favorite was Mayhem. In terms of my least favorite look in general, it was Blair St. Clair. Okay. The winner of this week's challenge is Ms. Cracker. Do you agree? Sure. Yeah. Alaska, this is the pit stop. We need to see your opinions. What part of that don't you understand? I, I need you to tell me <laughs> if she won the challenge. <laughs> I know that she's your drag daughter, right? I mean, she is. Yeah, she's my drag daughter. You don't have to be nice. I'm not always nice to her. I was not rolling in the aisles laughing during, gotcha. during her scene. I just wasn't. But I I was more entertained by Shay and Alexis. I would do it this way. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give them each points of ten. Cracker's performance in the challenge I would give an eight. Shay's I would give a seven. Cracker's runway I would give a seven and Shay's runway I would give a nine. So I guess based on that math, Shay's the winner. Right. Now the bottom is Mayhem and India. Do you agree with these bottom two? Yeah, they were the weakest scene, so it makes sense that they would both be in the bottom. Okay, I'm gonna agree with Mayhem. I'm gonna pull India out and put Blair in her place. Do you remember anything Blair did in that scene? Anything. That's the thing. As we were discussing it, her name never came up. And hiding in the background, being camouflaged, is yeah. <laughs> not the name of the game. She was camouflaging before, before those other bitches even started camouflaging. <laughs> Will you stay camouflaged? You, you know ain't gotta again. get camouflaged. So, for me, for that reason alone, I cannot. I'm gonna have to say that Blair deserves to be in the bottom. Okay. But how about bitch Mayhem is doing that thing where you act like you're not mad and you are fully livid. Nothing's wrong. No, I'm fine. As soon as you take it, take it there. It's almost like there's no getting out of that. It's true. 
the best way to deal with a, cr a critique on the runway is to be like, yeah, I totally agree. I look like <laughs> But also in their defense, you spend so much money, so much time, so much mental effort preparing this look so it looks as perfect as you can possibly imagine. And some judge between lunch breaks just go, nah, not for me. Yeah. No thanks. I may have lost my composure on TV at some point. So I completely understand. So now the queens are back in the workroom, right? India is like fighting tooth and nail to be there. And Mayhem is doing that thing. If I go out, I have fun. I'm proud of me and what I did. Yeah. But like in life, that philosophy is very great. Like that is how you should look at things like this. You should yeah. say, it's just a game and however it happens, but save that for after the competition is over because as yes. soon as you say it within these four walls. You're gone. You have just signed the paper that is a permission slip that lets everybody choose your, your lipstick. If she would have fought a little bit, a little bit more, I feel like it could have been her that stayed. Even a little. Yeah, because India's track record hasn't been the strongest, but she did the, the thing that you're kind of supposed to do. She immediately was like, okay, I really want to stay. This means a, a fucking ton to me to be here. And yeah. here's why I think I should stay and she shouldn't. She, that, those were the first words out of her mouth. That's what you're supposed to do. Them's the rules. I do think there comes a point in a, in a, in a drag race uh, season where certain girls decide to themselves, I literally can't win at this point. Look at Crystal on season 12. If she did the math, she would be like, well, there's no way I'm gonna make it to the end and win at this point. But you know what? She did make it to the end and she kind of almost won. So this week we found out that the lipstick assassin is Morgan McMichaels and that lipstick into Where Have You Been by Rihanna. What do you think of this lipstick? I love this lip sync. I think Morgan McMichaels looked exquisite. So good, so good. And Cracker did too. Okay, maybe we invented the changing the clothes for the lip sync, but I think Cracker just uh, perfected it. Yeah, Cracker's like changing into other nice clothes. <laughs> she was like, okay, they told us to bring 45 outfits. I brought 90. I think the best part of this number is when Cracker starts doing the coffee grinder and then Morgan McMichael one up her coffee grinder and starts doing the skip it and starts hopping over. That is how, to quote Ross Matthews, and that's how you win this competition, by the way. Morgan McMichaels was lip syncing like she had something to prove. The Coco Montreasing of the sleeves. Girl, the, the cake moment. Heavenly. It was a very fun lip sync to watch. They had a good time interacting with each other. It was good. All right, it's a tie. This started with, with Monet, Shade, and Trinity. Then there was a tie in the breeding challenge. This has gone too far. RuPaul's tie race. <laughs> like, you know what RuPaul's favorite article of clothing is? It's a tie. A tie. <laughs> It gives us a little bit of excitement because we're like, oh my gosh, two girls could go home, but the girls had made their decision. Yeah, the girls had talked, and the, the sad chance that when you realize that moment, oh my God, Mayhem never stood a chance. She never stood a chance. But you know what? Her exit was really, really classy, and she hugged Never. everybody, and she really is queen of the party. I mean, Mayhem is an amazing queen to work with at any time. She's lovely and, you know, it was a classy way to go out. I said it before, I'll say it again. You are one of my absolute favorite Rue girls. You are a drag race icon and that is on period. Ah, thank you for joining me. Of course, thank you. I think the same thing about you. And thank you for tuning in to the Pit Stop at Home once again. Join us the next week and we will be reviewing episode five of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Star Season Five. Can I get that RuPaul reverb effect? Bye! <laughs>Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.